Start your engines. <clears throat> um, Ephesians chapter 1. And um, we've gone over some of these scriptures before, but uh, we didn't go into them too much to really identify certain things here. <clears throat> um, chapter 1, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father, and we did talk about that, the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, I want you to see um, the way that he addresses this, because Paul clearly sees and has addressed throughout, and will in this letter, um, understands that we are sons of God, that we have been made <coughs> sons to the Father. But uh, his wording here is significant. Blessed be the God and Father of us, no, of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he understands that that relationship means everything to the Father. That in other words, and you know, you, you, you catch that. You catch that when the few times that you hear the Father speak. I mean, this is my beloved son. There's something going on there between them. There's a heart. There's more than just uh, deities, <laughs> if I may, deities that are in communication. Um, you know, and we saw in Colossians just briefly also, um, where he says, uh, we have been delivered from the power of darkness. Uh, we haven't been delivered from the presence of darkness. It's all around us. But we've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And the wording, the actual wording in the Greek, the, the son of his love. That's, that's pretty powerful. I mean, it is. And so... As we gather in those thoughts and as we meditate on, on realities that are not our own and that, that are not uh, religiously communicated, in other words, they cannot be communicated religiously, right? I mean, those are because those are hard things, and it's always going to be a hard thing with God. I mean, you know, you say, okay, well, yeah, but there's this and that theological and da-da-da-da. But when it comes to him and the things that are the eternal plan or the, the eternal desires of the heart of the Father and the eternal desires of the Son, then they are clearly heart things. And that's what's going on. That's what you're getting. You're getting that. And you're, and you're realizing that, <clears throat> you know, and remember that verse that says, uh, you know, we have fellowship with one another, but truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son. I mean, it could have said it, it, and truly our fellowship is in the Godhead with the God called the Father, you know, how we talk. And, and we know there's one God, but that sort of religious approach because it doesn't require any heart and it doesn't require, uh, you know, uh, any um, involvement on any other level than to study, you know, academic approach and stuff like that. Um, as, as I said, hollow and robotic instead of real and, and, and tender. Um, uh, I was sharing recently with someone and I said, I just want to spend time with Jesus. And I said, I just want to feel his breath as he shares the word. Well, you know, we don't feel, but we do. We feel the breath of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, don't we? Yeah. I mean, you do. You feel the breath of the Holy Spirit. You feel that movement, and you feel, as it were, the breath of God as he shares the things that are on his heart. And um, it is just, you know, it is just so difficult if uh, you are charged with, trying to communicate things that are more dear to the Father between the Son and the Son between the Father than you could ever know. But you want to know. You know what I mean? But you want to know. You, you, and so you, um, uh, I, I remember a long time ago and I wrote a newsletter on it early on when I first uh, started writing newsletters 
And uh, it was a situation where I was hearing the, the communications of the Father between the Son, and it was as if um, I were over in a corner without them noticing me, and they were sharing. And I heard heart. The word communications is, a, I mean, they were communicating, but heart. Um, find a word because I can still recall the sharing and knowing this is beyond even the least religious person because it's not religion they're not religious you know that's not a well let's talk about religion Jesus you know okay father well, I was thinking, uh, you know, you know, the doctrine of <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. They're not religious. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> I know that's a lot to, you know, but it, but it is, there's a, there's a blessing going on here. Yes. Yeah. I think it short because it's not an absence of something you're talking about. When we say we don't want to be religious, that's still not being filled with Christ. It's it's part of the description, but it's not the whole thing. And right. maybe that's right. what makes it missing. It's not that they're not <clears throat> religious, it's that they are something else that isn't religious. And I'm trying to communicate that. Because, I mean, even if we tried to communicate that, like if, if we said, when we, let's say you and I, when we share, it's not religious. That would be difficult to, to communicate. But how much more between the Father and with His Son, you know? Because that's, see, that's not only not religious, that's like something dear in their hearts. And that's not religious. <laughs> yes? I was driving here, I was just thinking about the Abraham John 1, 1, where it says the Word was with God. And that the Word, the Word was with and we make the word everything but being with God. It's it's study, it's how to do, it's deeper, but it's not with God. Right. For us, the word is a tool to be spiritual or to learn something instead of a relationship mm -hmm. of witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the witness. We've seen light. <laughs> well, well, isn't it? Isn't there something to that, though? I mean. Wouldn't that be much more correct? But it's certainly not correct grammar. <laughs> okay, so so uh, we see this thing. It's saying this here, but but Paul is um, he's he he recognizes something there. He recognizes there's something between the Father and the Son, and and he recognizes that somehow we're a part of that. So he says, "Blessed be." the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be, okay. Now, one thing that you have to realize is um, that this, this verse, this verse three still, Ephesians 1, 3, that this verse, he's not acknowledging the Son except for uh, as the Son of the Father. In other words, he's not saying blessed be the Son. except he blesses the son of the father who is doing this. Okay, so let's read it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So Jesus didn't bless us with all blessings in heavenly places in himself. It would have said in himself. This is the father speak, or speaking of the father. And um, there is a blessedness that we have been. Um, yeah. Let me let me just approach this, you know, religiously. Blessed be the God and Father who hath uh, saved us from a burning hot hell. Okay, it doesn't say that. You really don't get that anywhere. I mean, you don't. You don't get, you know, I'm saved from the fire and brimstone and I will live for God because I owe it to him. 
they usually don't say I owe it to him. They, but that, that's what's behind it. It is you did this in terms of salvation from hell. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, I was met at, I've been, the Lord just, the Holy Spirit's just messing with me. <laughs> He's been messing with me. And I was just within the realm of this that he's moving. I was thinking in terms of that he saves our soul. And I just went, oh, my God, our soul. Yes, our soul, not just, not just our spirit, you know. I mean, because we talk about our saving souls. But really, when you lead somebody to God, you hadn't changed their soul, their mind and will and emotions in the sense of their government. You've they're, they've been born again in the spirit. So I was, you know, thinking of that, and I was thinking, oh my God, to truly have our souls saved is an incredible, now that's a blessing. Because it's not, if, if, listen to this, if our souls are saved from hell, then our souls are being saved from us because we're the hell. You, you got that. When our, if our souls are being saved from hell, it's not the physical burning thing. That's what our bodies are saved from. But our souls are saved from the hell that is us. Now that's pretty good. I could use a little bit of, a little, of, little dose of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just amazing, verse 3. I mean, we, we go over verse 3 real quick so we can get to the good stuff. <laughs> you know? And here it is just brimming with all of this. Spiritual blessings. Blessed. Blessed, blessed be. Half blessed us. Spiritual blessings. It is all in the realm of the Father toward his Son. He put us in Christ. Is that right or wrong? Yes. Is that what it's saying? Yes. Yeah, you can't get out, you, you know, you can't get out of it. The realm of this blessing is in the realm of his Son, Jesus Christ, and it is in union with him that everything is going to spring back to him. See, there spring, it springs toward us in terms of blessing, but it's going to spring back to the Father in terms of sons in the image of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That, that's it. And that, see, and, and, and what you just said is, is, Lord willing, tonight where I would like to go. I would like to go there so strong because... Because that's where the Holy Spirit has just been dealing with me. This, uh, and and yet, you know, when you're dealing with that, that the blessing going back to the Father, you're also wrapped up continually in this fact of the bride towards Jesus. I mean, it's you. you we're dividing it for teaching's sake, but they're one. So it's kind of always going to be there. There's, in other words, you can never ignore the Son and bring glory to the Father except by the Son. You see. Amen. All right. So, um, a verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him. In other words, you weren't chosen. You weren't chosen. You were chosen in him. He chose to put you in him. Okay. I'm getting some of those looks. So, let's do it. This is him and this is us. And here we have God the Father. Okay. So here's our thought. The Father has chosen me and now I'm saved. Praise God. Here's a little halo over my head. I'm saved. I'm saved. God, he chose me. He's, he saw this little creature on the earth. And he took compassion, and his little heart just went down and said, you're so special, Randy. Oh, I got to choose you. I just got to. You got to be mine. You're exactly what I want. 
No. See this arrow? It's going away. And he says, if you're going to be chosen, you need to be in him. And he brought you there how? Through the cross. He crucified that precious little thing that you thought you were, why he chose you. You know, and that's, that's to his honor that he did that. He should be glorified for that. <laughs> Especially when you know what you really are instead of what you think you are. Then, then, in that case, then you're not, you don't care whether you're saved from a hell. You want to be saved from you. Yeah. You see, to give back to God is going to take more than, you know, a human being and at their best. Man at his best is altogether vanity, it says in Psalms. So, if there's a choosing, that choosing is going to be, we're found in him. And didn't Paul say that? Not you know, I, I want to be found in him, not having mine own. Where is in him found? Here. Where's my own? Outside. But the Father did more than just do that in Christ. He did it in Son. Yeah. Blessed us with all, uh, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Father of Jesus. Because that's where we bless from. Is that right? Yes. We, we bless out from him. In other words, okay, what are, you, what are you saying, Randy? I don't get that. See this little guy again? This little guy out here? This little, this little you looking thing? Not E-W-E, but Y-O-U. He can, you know, he can do everything possible to please the Father and never do it because he's not your father. You say, well, I'm born again. He's my father. But you're born again. And, and this thing's going to tell you that in whom you have redemption, the forgiveness of his blood. You only have forgiveness and redemption in whom, not by whom. I mean, it says it. And what's important is, if it says it, then our, we should, we should embrace it, but we should embrace it in this way. Father, I don't fully comprehend the relation of that, because none of us do. Certainly not fully. I do not comprehend, and imagine, imagine being 20 years with the Lord and still praying that prayer or 30, or 40, or, you know, and saying, I, you know this in him situation? Father, I really don't know what that means. And if you pray that to the Father, he's going he's gonna to shine the sun on you and in you, S-O-N. He's going he's gonna to shine the sun because the bright and morning star to the Father's heart is Jesus the Son, you know. And that's, that's the relationship with it, that he has. Okay? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Okay. So, so we, we identify this little guy right here in all of this. But in truth, here's what you have to realize. Well, I'll leave that and take this. Before the foundation of the world, you were not. Who was? <laughs> the son was. Okay. So you weren't, you, you, as it were, didn't exist. And if you were going to be brought into existence in his mind, it wasn't going to take place at creation. It's going to take place in son. New creation. Right? Okay, so, so whatever, whatever was in the Father's heart, because remember, this is according as he hath chosen us, the he there is still the Father. He's still the Father. Okay, so at whatever point he chooses you, first of all, he does that before the foundation of the world, before you exist, so you're not really the factor in it. 
however that's going to take place, it's going to be an eternal thing that happens. It's not just going to be a work of God in the earth temporarily to save you from hell. It's going to be a eternal plan. <laughs> I'm just trying to get your attention. Eternal plan. It's going to be oh, we've got heart up here this time. It's going to be heart eternal. You thought I was going to say heart plan. It's really not a heart plan. It's a heart desire. And he releases things to bring that about. But we would call that a plan. But in God, it is releasing his desire. And the, uh, if the father is that way, the father saying, this is what I desire. Sons, guess who get loosed? The son and the Holy Spirit to carry that out. Oh, it's on now. You know what I mean? Then it's on. And that's the way the Godhead works. That's it's just this constant, you know, and then Jesus has a desire and the father, you know, the father sends, you know, Father Abraham sends Eliezer, go down there and get a bride for my son and bring her back. Leave this country and go there. And the Holy Spirit is here to say, I'm staying with the bride now. You know, come on into this. Come on into this. Right. So these these are eternal realities of his heart. They're eternal desires. And if we miss that, if we, you know, here's, here's the deal. We say, well, as long as I'm saved, that's really all I care about. When I was in Bible school, I mean, the Lord started sharing a bunch of stuff with me early on. This was one, this sonship thing and this thing of, the Father's heart, one of the earliest things that he shared with me. And so I remember a bunch of us, uh, we had a, a little group of hippies that we'd sit around and share the word and talk and, and uh, in the midst of uh, Assembly of God-ites. <laughs> and they would, and we were sharing and I was going, you know, da 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 da. And one of the brothers, the hippie brothers said, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. I'm going, this is, this is, this is incredible. No, no. I said, why not? He said, ignorance is bliss. I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, if I don't hear it and know about it, I'm not responsible for it. I said, so you don't care about the Father's heart. I mean, you know, you don't want to be responsible for it. Wanting to carry out and to, you know, flow with that, with the, the, the purpose of God, purpose of the Son and the Holy Spirit to bring forth sons to the glory of the Father. Uh, I don't know. So he didn't even hear that. Do you, you remember who that was? Did you see, did y'all see Deb? That, that was her boyfriend at the time. Yeah, she dropped him like a hot potato. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, his name was Buck. <laughs> Buck. Yeah. Of course, he's about 90 right now, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> she was she was nineteen then or twenty. <laughs> eighteen, eighteen, yeah. He was kind of cute. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Come on, don't you see this, this continued spirit of this? Um, it is, so it could say that we would be holy and without blame. 
But there's something going on here and with us in him. There's something going on in relationship to that that is more than religion and it is more than church and it's more than Christianity. It is the Father and the Son and we've been brought into that. And why would we embrace ignorance? Why wouldn't we put down all of the, if we heard this, if we actually heard this, why wouldn't we set aside all of the, well, I want to be an evangelist. I want to, I want to evangelize the world. Okay, that's fine. But everybody's doing that to the, to the, as it were, rejection or ignorance of the father's heart or the son wanting a bride. Well, I just want to evangelize the world and get people saved. Okay. Well, maybe in next class we'll, we'll start seeing a contrast of that. We'll start seeing the, the, I almost want to say the deadly contrast of that. It's not good. Um, having predestinated us unto the adoption of, and the word there is sons by Jesus Christ. Okay, so he, so the father and the word predestination there, again, relates to being in son. In other words, he doesn't, that little guy that's no longer here or wasn't here before the foundation of the world, he doesn't predestinate that guy. And if he did, then we would be Calvinists. Is that right? Is that, I can't even remember, Calvinists. We'd be Calvinists instead of Jesus lovers. <laughs> Instead of wanting, wanting by Christ, sensing the life within us, having the life within us motivate us, instead of the externals of Christianity being our motivation. And when that begins to come alive in us, then you are moved beyond the bounds of your finite being. And, and then you want to see the glory go to the Father. What glory? See, we say, well, let's give the Father glory. Glory, glory, glory. Okay, now let's give the Son glory. Glory, glory, glory. Anybody see a problem with that? <laughs> to give the Father glory is to give him sons. To give Jesus glory is to give him that co companion of his heart, that counterpart that is like him, that is precious to him that is uh, all that he wanted out of this well let's just you know well let's just uh, do some ministry things let's just you know and we all have ministry things I mean there's I'm not I'm not downing that but isn't it possible that there could be an overriding thing uh, if we put it on the, the, the plane of calling it a plan that there would be a greater plan at work in us that always works in us rather than, well, I'm a children's minister and I only minister on Sundays or something. You see what I'm saying? And, and, you know, and then I do during the week, I study and I make stuff. But can't we have these desires eternally within us? Or are we just gonna be about compassionate ministry instead of memorial ministry? Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. La, la, la. All right. So, uh, so the Father, if we, here's the good news. The Father has placed us in Christ. It started with that. Verse 3. The Father's placed us in Christ, but he has uh, predestinated us in him in him unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself. All right, so what does that mean? If we comprehend the eternal steps of God, I mean, because there's a, there's a completely different way of viewing all this. I mean, we can just, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Well, man is over here. And God is over here, and we can't get to God, so we need a bridge. Okay. 
And basically what we need to do is just walk across. <laughs> well, you have, to, you have to step on the cross to get there. You have to use it. Use. Cross. To get to what? Uh, okay. Heaven. All right. Now right there. If... If that's all it is, if that I'm just I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying if that's all there is. See, I didn't I didn't say this isn't valid. I walked across the cross. Okay. But if that's all there is, then it's pretty much done once we get the other side here. I mean not either heaven or whatever, saved land. And we don't have to recognize that there's something in the Father's heart. See, we don't even have to recognize he has a heart. Amen? We don't have to recognize that there's something in Jesus' heart. We don't. We don't have to. We don't have to. A lot of people don't. It's okay. It's okay. There's so many more who don't. So we can hide in the crowd and not feel bad. We all think this way. But there is something in Jesus' heart, too. And um, uh, there's a... The Holy Spirit wants to connect us to the Father and to the Son in these ways. And there's a tractor beam he uses. Anybody know what a tractor beam is? Raise your hand. Star Trek fans, thank you. <laughs> a tractor beam would uh, a, a ship's coming in and then the tractor beam hits it and it pulls it on into the station or whatever there's the Holy Spirit has a tractor beam and that is he attracts us with starting to unveil the heart of the Father and of the Son and as he does that something in you because it's there. I think we were meant to be drawn to this, don't you? Yes. I mean, you know, the, something should bear witness. And go, you know what? That's right. Or you know, that's of God, or whatever. However, you know, whatever words we want to use. But you know, I know that's true. And you know, that's that's why a bunch of you're here. That's what did it. And it was that tractor beam of the Holy Spirit who begins to draw us into this relationship between the Father and with the Son. And it's only by getting in that relationship with the Father and the Son that we see that there was a desire. Because everything he's doing is in Son to bring forth sons. And everything, you know, on that level is coming out of Jesus. And Jesus is trying to get everybody back to, if you will, we use this term, or I use this term, back to the Father's house, meaning this, oh boy, I could, I, I've spent some time recently there too, uh, being prodigal sons, not just prodigal sinners. God, what are we trying to get to? Well, I, I sinned and I just want forgiveness, Father. And the Father didn't go, Abi Gabi, no Skoda Magoda, get back to work. Does he? He embraces him. Not, not a religious act on a rebellious son. And he puts, he puts all of the insignias or the symbols or the realities that represent the, the, the accepted son, accepted verse 6, in puts all of the elements that are his on us and then the prodigal son starts being awakened to a son by Jesus Christ to the father and it's incredible it's incredible, the chains. Well, what else you got working there? 
he's got another son. And this son isn't out sinning and doing bad and, you know, messing up. This one is very much, I've always done what you've asked. I am, I am the son that you want because what you want is obedience. And that's not what he wants at all. Not, you know, I would say that there is a, an obedience and a submission that is not obedience and submission. Um, it's, it is, really flows from love. I mean, everything has to flow from love if God is love. Uh, but not ooey gooey love. This kind of love that the Father and the Son have and the Holy Spirit um, and that, that uh, submission and obedience is, um, oh God, it's labeled that, but it's flowing from a heart, not a, I will line my will up with Jesus. Does that make sense? I mean, it's flowing from a heart that loves and wants you know, not from, well, this is, this is what the command is, and I should do the commands, and, you know, I should, you know, I should stay in line. Well, okay, that's the elder son. Okay? And if you look at it like uh, the prodigal son is, in a certain sense, if, if we're just saying, if you sort of looked at it like the prodigal son was uh, the Gentiles, then the elder son is the, is the Jews, and he's under law. Mm -hmm. We're just taking that picture for a moment. But um, he's, he's uh, you know, I, here's the way I re relate to you, Father. I relate to you as God of the household. And you, you know, I know how you are, and you want this done and I know that da, 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 and all this kind of stuff and so it's like no relationship with the father no doesn't even know that the father has a heart okay now I don't know what your experience has been but some of our experience is that we never had a father with a heart if you know what I mean we never really had a father with a heart so it was hard to learn that But this father, even though at times it looks like he doesn't have a heart, he's all heart. <laughs> he, that, that song you've still never heard that I wrote a long time ago, uh, he does all things by love. And I believe it with all my being. But love isn't ooey gooey and let you get by with stuff and stuff like that. It is, it is a heart that will bring you into the, what, what is meant to be your fullness. If you were created for this, if you were created for this, then you'll never be satisfied until you come into this. That's all there is to it. You, you can say, well, yeah, I'm happy. I got a job and I got me a spouse and I got this and that. But there's, there's always something missing. You can say, I'm saved and I know, I know all, I can do all nine gifts of the Spirit. Who else can you, do you know can do that? I, I would say uh, the Holy Spirit, since he's the one who does it. I mean, that's why they're called the nine gifts of, did you take them from him? You know? Anyway, so see, even in that story, you just see, you don't see the father happy ever in that story until someone comes back and the father meets him. You know, the father doesn't say, get in here and get moving with everything that I have in my heart. And when you do that, then it will be cool. He meets him way out there on the road before he even gets there. He sees him a long way off. But he does see where he's headed, Amen. the Father's house. He says, oh, my God, what am I doing in this mess? In the Father's house, there is plenty that covers everything. It makes it all work. But he still didn't know it was the Father till, you know. I mean, he could have, because his first words were going to be 
you know, Father, I've sinned, and da-da-da-da, and he's expecting the Father to go, well, all right, well, we're going to hunker down on you, and we're going to do this, we're going to, you know, and he just throws his arms around him and kisses him. The, the Father has beautiful eyes, would you say? Would you say that he has beautiful eyes? Because he sees us even in our muck and mire and sees us as in sun. And then puts all those emblems and everything that identifies us as the son that we don't deserve at all. But then the transition, the, the, the transformation starts. Let's go over here to the cross. Let's kill this. Let's kill this thing. And let's make that death our joy instead of just the point that saves us from hell. Let's make it our joy. Let's make it, let's make this a feast. You ever heard of the Feast of Israel? The feasts. They're all supposed to be feasts, and they made them religious things and got all caught up in the religious side of it. And then the son seems to finally get it. He sees the father's heart, and he sees the, the cross that is not based on getting forgiveness for sin. Sweet saver offering. He embraces it with the Father, and they're just together in this thing. And what a joy to the Father. I mean, we always see what the Son gets out of it, you know? I mean, because there's, if you will, there's three elements in that story. There's the Father, there's the, the Son of the Father's heart that you don't see, but he's there. And then you see the prodigal. Of course, you got the elder son. But you see the prodigal in there. And so we place ourselves in the place of the prodigal with the religious explanation that goes along with this. You can mess up really bad and come back and God will forgive you. That's the moral of that story. And you go, really, that's it? We can, get, we can mess up real bad? I mean, that's good to know. Okay? Between now and Sunday, let's all do that. And then Sunday, we'll just come back and get forgiveness. Let's do, it. Let's do it. But you know, something's supposed to happen. Something is supposed to happen in us. We're supposed to not be caught up in all of the storyline of the prodigal son, nor the, as if we were him even. We're supposed to eventually discover heart and in this case the father's heart the father was waiting the father was longing the father was looking we never see that we just go well that's real good you know i'm glad that he you know wasn't sitting there watching tv you know instead of you know he came out and he waited and looked he's longing he's He's, he wants his son, and he wants us to be sons by Christ so bad, and he wants it to be a reality in us. And we just keep playing the religious games, and we keep twisting stories that are meant to help us to, to get that tractor beam working on us, to pull us there. And we keep twisting them and making them something way less and carnal and just temporal and based on sin, always sin-based instead of father-based or son-based. And it keeps us, and we wonder why, you know, our, our spiritual life is not so spiritual, <laughs> you know, not so spiritual. We wonder why it's so messed up. It's messed up because some, the, the major portion of what's supposed to be there is not there. We, we say, oh, okay, so we're supposed to pray, you know, like on our knees up here or something. Oh, oh, when I get baptized, I'm supposed to go under. Oh, when we take communion, we're supposed to, you know, you know eat first and then drink. We learn all this stuff. Every bit of it points to Christ and Him crucified and points to their heart. It's not just stuff. We're not supposed to go through the motions. We're not supposed to go through the motions. We're supposed to press past the veil. And he said, come boldly. We go, oh, I don't, I don't see that. Or, you know, oh, here, here's a new teaching, you know. 
I'll go after that, <laughs> you know? It's like, we're so easily distracted and everything. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit impresses me when we're together to emphasize the heart. Amen. To emphasize the heart. Amen. To emphasize his heart and to emphasize our heart because this is something every Christian needs. It doesn't matter what denomination they are, right? doesn't matter. It, this is, you know, when it's all said and done, the father's going to get sons. And when he gets sons and they stand before him and he looks at him, he's going to go, okay, how many Baptists we got here? Yeah. How many Methodists we got here? Yeah. That's the high point of some conferences. Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> we have got a fine group here that you know come here together and the divisions are gone what the only way the divisions are going to be gone is when you strike that cord right there through the sun and he'll die to make us one that's it he'll die to make us one he doesn't die to make us baptist I'm not picking on the Baptists, but, well, maybe a little bit. Yeah, they're tough. But even the first Baptist pointed to Jesus. John the Baptist, that's not me. It's not about me. I didn't do it. It's him right over there. And then all the Baptists go, oh, we don't want to talk to that guy. It's be a Baptist or whatever. See, I'm, you did this to me. <laughs> God help us. Yeah. All right, let's go to... Um, oh, gosh. I really wanted to get into some of this other stuff, and I, I don't fear, but I have a good feeling that the Holy Spirit's going to keep trying to get our hearts. He's just going to, it's like, he just, he's just tireless. He's just tireless to lift up Jesus. He just, you know, and his greatest joy is to not be seen. He's, you know, you, in a sense, you can see the father. You can picture what he'd look like. In a sense, you could the son. But he's just happy not to be seen so that the father and the son can be seen. And he points us to them and to their hearts. And yet, Holy Spirit, we know your heart too. We know what you're like. You show it all the time. <sighs> According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace through which he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The grace there isn't through the grace that he saved us, but the grace was that we are accepted, but only in, we can say in Jesus, can't we? We can say in Son, can't we? But in keeping with the blessedness and the, uh, the spirit of what's going on here, it is to, uh, through which he hath made us accepted in thee, in thee, beloved, the beloved, not a be another beloved one, it's thee to the Father. And when, as the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we will flee Babylon and run to get in him. Run to, to you know, draw us and we will run. But if we don't ever really get it, we hear it and we go, yeah, okay, let me mark that down that I, uh, I believe that. <laughs> you know, and keep it in those notes until you're 80 years old or something. It's not going to do any good. There has to be a pursuit. There has to be a longing. When, when you feel, uh, this is the way I feel about it. You know, 
I hear people share, even, even people here, I hear people share from time to time, and they'll say something, and I have learned right then in my heart, pray right now, pray. Because they'll say something like, you know, well, we need to, da, 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 our, our heart should be, da, 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 this father, that's, I don't wait, I don't wait till later. I used to, in Bible school, in the early part, I would hear it, and then I'd go, I'll pray about that later. Oh, and I'll, that too, you know. And then I just, I learned, by the time I get out there, I forget everything. But I remember it then, at that moment, I can hear it, and I go, Father, I want this, I want you, I desire you, and I do my praying right there. I, I don't stop my listening. I don't know if you can do that, but I lear I've learned to pray and hear at the same time. And, and so that I can still hear whatever, I mean, it's like honey from their lips. I can hear my Jesus that I love coming forth. And so I'm, I'm listening and I'm praying and I'm listening and I'm longing. I, I don't just let my heart stay hard and, and unmoved and whatever and say, well, I'll meditate on that, and I bet that'll be that'll work in me one day. <laughs> I just go, Lord, I'm longing for you now, Father. I'm longing for this relationship now. I don't want, I want to make this an eternal moment, and I want this one to be eternal moment. I want this to be an eternal moment. I don't want to just live in this. Excuse my language, because Cassie's probably going to listen to this later, and the boys will hear me say stupid. This stupid place. This place is nothing. I mean, it's not. It's nothing unless it is a place of his heart and his word and of, of us coming into that by his spirit. It's, it's not. It's just another church. It's not even that. It's not even that good, you know, because, I mean, they at least have programs. You know, and a lot of them. And what? And, and they have money. And a lot of them now, they have like a barista out there with a coffee bar and like donuts and stuff. Where is ours? Where's our coffee? Where's our donuts? What is it going to... What's it going to take to catch up to the rest of the churches? Give us a king like the other churches have. <clears throat> Whatever. You know, take, take a number for God's sake. You know. The... I'm not, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not afraid of any reaction or whatever. The only thing I'm afraid of is if I don't clearly try to impart his heart or to open us up to it, then I, that scares me more than anything because then my life will have been worthless. So if stuff happens, let that happen. And especially if it happens because there's some, there's some truth into it and they don't like it, you know, then let it happen. You know, God's, I'll be with him and he'll be with me whether it's through the fire or through the blessings. And this is going to sound weird to you. I'd rather be with him through the fire. You know why? Because in the fire is where he, he shows up. You know what I mean? This is like the three Hebrew children in there, you know, and it's just a trial until he shows up, and then it's a party again, you know? He's walking around in there. That's what it says. It wasn't he just in there. He's walking around, hey, what's going on, Shadrach? Hey, Meshach. You know? We can fellowship there because we're fellowshipping in his suffering. We're fellowshipping in his cross. We're fellowshipping in the, the reality of him, the lamb, and not just what he did across that gets us across. You know? Not, and notice my wording again. Not just. I'm not putting that down. We can't even get to this unless we cross this thing. But, I mean, for God's sake, how long do we preach this before we move to the Father's heart and the Son? You know? People, people that have crossed this are, are dying. They're drying up. They're, they're, they're becoming arid. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you can tell them I got a chance to use it. God, it's time to quit. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's time to quit. And so I won't tell you all that story. Oh, my God. All right. I want to just show you real quick. See there where this says end of class number four right there in red? See where it says Ephesians 1 right there? That's as far as we got. We're just.